I am going to cut an arc on the center line as you can see here as I did and take this point as Q1. Now if you are asking a question that why did I do this? Now it's a reverse case. See uh, I took the ra uh, I took the radius as CP0 put my point at say I will take an example C4 and cut an arc on the circle. So that is a point or a position of the circle and when the center is at C4. Now if I do the I, here I have done the reverse thing I have taken a point on the circle now for that point on the circle or uh, point on the curve I need to know the center of my cir rolling circle so what I have done is I have taken this point and with radius equal to CP0 that is the radius of the rolling circle I have cut an arc here on the center so what happened is that this is my center of the circle and this is the position of my point P0 when this is the uh, situation now for this what I'll do is next I will draw a perpendicular to Q1 which intersects the directing line and mark it as Q2. The next step from Q2 I'll join Q by a straight line. Now this is a normal to my circle. This green line shows a normal to my circle. As you can see that this angle would probably be 90 degrees. Not probably, it has to be 90 degrees because now nah, this green line is a normal to this curve. Next is, I will join, uh, I, once I have joined QQ2, now I have the normal. So to make a tangent, I need to do what? I need to draw a perpendicular to my normal to get the tangent. So that's what I'll do and this blue line is uh, perpendicular to the normal of the curve hence this line is known as a tangent you might say okay, it is touching the uh, curve at uh, more than one point but that is not the case this is just I made the line bold enough so that you can know okay, actually where the line or the arcs or the points are being marked so while drawing in the paper draw as light as possible and as neat as possible your neatness, lightness and accurate accuracy, precision gets you marks. So please remember that. So now we have completed the plotting a cycloid or constructing a cycloid. Thereafter, we have plotted the normal as well as the tangent to this cycloid. So we come to end of cycloid. So let's move to the next curve. What do we have is a superior cycloid. As I told you, we have a simple cycloid. Now, this is a superior cycloid. Now, what is the difference between a simple cycloid and a superior cycloid? This is the point. The point which was there on the circle now will be outside the rolling circle. Say, right now, you are there, in, you are there on the edge of the room. You are there standing at the wall of the room. Now, I have gone out of the room. So, that's what the point has done. First, the point was there on the circle. Now, it has gone outside the circle. So, what happens is that once it goes outside the circle, it will be plotting uh, some, some different part than what a simple cycloid actually plots. So, let's see what the, there the steps would be almost the same. The only difference would be that the, the, the P, that CP0 that we used to take would be diameter plus the distance from the circle of that point which is outside the circle which was actually on the circle for a simple cycloid let's move to the next point see this is the animation as you can see for a cycloid what happened was that the curve started from here because of what because this point was uh, the point was on the circle so it could not go beyond this directing line now what happened is now it became a superior circle so it went outside the uh, outside the, as you can see this is the point which has gone which is outside the circle so this is the total length from the center of the circle and when the circle moves this point will move along with it just as p0 did in simple cycloid and it will trace a path which is of uh, something of this sort i'll show you two to three times the animation so that it is more clear to you once again i'll do that lastly okay so this is the difference between a simple cycloid and a superior cycloid so let's now uh, quickly uh, draw the uh, superior cycloid so that we can move on this procedure is same as the simple cycloid the 
as i told you the only difference is that this point would not be on the circle but it would be outside the circle so once the point is outside the circle the radius that we are going to take to mark the uh, to cut the arcs or to mark the points for the si uh, for uh, joining the curve is would be greater than what we did in the last simple cycloid so now we will assume that the simple uh, the for, uh, what you can say the point the point is x mm outside the rolling circle the point is x mm outside the rolling circle the diameter remains d and the center remains c so what we will do is first step we will draw the diameter first we'll take the center and then we will uh, construct a circle of diameter d here i have taken the center c and i am uh, drawing a circle with diameter d okay moving on to the next this is a point p which is there on the circle which from which i'll again draw a tangent i'll draw a tangent and uh, a line which is there and then i will divide as i told you you can divide the uh, center the line passing through the center also into eight equal parts here i am taking eight equal parts then i will divide the circle also into eight equal parts first oh sorry uh, i'll just go back now what i did is one sec please pardon me here what i did is i draw drew a tangent uh, as i did previously and i drew a tangent to the circle and then what i did is i drew a parallel line a single parallel line which is passing through the center and divided this line into eight equal parts now please be clear and please make sure that you are aware that this line in this case is not the directing line why because the point is outside the circle this is not the directing line no the tangents which is passing through this point is the directing line the only difference would be that this point p won't trace the locus the point p would be outside this circle and that particular point would be tracing the locus but the directing line would remain the same why because the circle is rolling on this line itself that's why okay now next what i'm going to do is with radius equal to d plus x why d plus x because d is my diameter of the circle and uh, uh, sorry i made a mistake the radius would be cp0 that is d by 2 plus x instead of uh, uh, the whole di uh, diameter because if i take it then it will become wrong then so d uh, has to be replaced by d by 2 plus x that is radius of the circle plus x is the distance the point is away outside the circle then what i'll do is i'll divide the circle into eight equal parts see what i did is this cp is a radius of the circle so cp plus this distance is x so the total distance is cp0 again and then i have divided the bigger circle into eight equal parts again as i did previously i divided the circle into uh, the number of parts i divided the circle into i divide the line also into equal parts or here i have first divided the line and then i have divided the circle into equal parts i have taken eight equal parts here because i have already showed you how to uh, draw the cycloid in a more intense manner so i am taking it a little bit simple so this is the thing the next thing drawing parallel lines again from one two three and four five six seven eight nine uh, sorry five six seven and eight on the circle so this is passing through four this is passing to three and five this is passing to the center line itself uh, passing to two and six then this line 1 passing through 1 and 7 would be the directing line itself and then again uh, 8 is the point which is there outside the uh, outside or uh, say beyond the directing line so let's move ahead now with radius the, this step is same the radius is equal to cp0 now cp0 has increased it is not equal to the distance of the center from the directing line so this has increased so what i'm going to do the procedure is same the procedure is not going to dif differ the only thing that is getting deferred is that the point will be the points that will cut the arc length would be more so initially cp0 would be here itself on the circle that is cp0 now i take this radius center as c1 and cut an arc on line pa passing through one so what will happen is 
this is p1 that i have cut then again i'll take the center is equal to c2 and i will cut an arc on line passing through 2 which is my p2 then next what i'll do is i'll uh, take c3 as center and radius is equal to c p0 and cut an arc on line passing through 3 then i'll do it for 4 then i'll do it for 5 then 6 i'll do it, uh, sorry 5 6 7 8 so i have all the points i have different points uh, of the superior cycloid with me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply join these points and then the next thing that I'll do is I'll draw, draw, draw my tangent and my normal to complete the question of a superior cycloid. Let's move ahead. So I'll join all the points 1, 2, 3, 4 up till P12 or oh sorry P8 to get the different uh, to get the superior cycloid. See, see again you can visualize what is the difference. This point was here in a simple cycloid and this point was here on the uh, simple cycloid this is the initial point of generation this is the final point of generation so you can see the difference that it has the curve has moved outside the directing line or say beyond the directing line for a superior cycloid now if i ask you what would be an inferior cycloid can anybody visualize superior was outside the circle so inferior would be what inside the circle so uh, sorry first we, uh, we will draw the tangent then we will move to the inferior cycloid so for the tangent the uh, the procedure would remain absolutely the same you should remember one thing this procedure that is we are going to take a point on the curve then with radius equal to uh, the distance between the center of the circle and the point that is cp0 will take that radius and we will cut an arc on the center line that is passing to the center of the rolling circle then next we are going to drop a perpendicular up to what up to the point of when p0 is there then we are going to connect the point uh, which is there and we'll get the normal and then we are going to draw a perpendicular to it to get what to get the tangent so let's see how it is done point q has been taken the next step c p0 radius center as q cut an arc on this and join q q1 if you don't join then also it's okay if you join then also it's okay so this this is the center position when and this is the point uh, position for p0 when the center is at q1 then i'll drop a perpendicular up to p0 see now you have to see the difference what happened the di the difference was that in the uh, in the previous simple cycloid we uh, dropped this perpendicular up till what up till this directing line but here we are going to drop the perpendicular up to the last point of the circle that is this point the parallel line to the directing uh, directing line the parallel line passing through p0 the point which has to be plotted so the point will come right up till here now next point is uh, next uh, step is i'll join my q2 to q what uh, will it give me it will give me my normal to this curve so q2 to q would give me my normal to the curve so for constructing a perpendicular to this normal would give me my tangent to the super si uh, superior cycloid i hope this uh, picture is clear moving on to the inferior cycloid inferior cycloid the point here is inside the rolling circle see simple cycloid it is on the circle superior cycloid outside the circle and inferior cycloid inside the circle it says in the uh, name itself inferior so inside the circle then superior we know superior is always bigger than whatever it is so it is outside the circle and simple means it is on the circle so make sure you know the difference between all these three because if, if one of these come in uh, plotting then you should be able to make out that what particular uh, is it asking see now this is a animation i'll move it again what was happening in a simple cycloid in a simple cycloid 
this point uh, uh, p0 was on the circle uh, let's look at the slide yeah p on the circle so this was touching here for superior cycloid this point was going beyond the line why because it is uh, outside the circle now what is happening in a uh, for construction of cycloid in an inferior cycloid that this point is inside the circle as you can see here so when this point is inside the circle so what happens is that this point never touches this line be going beyond is not an option touching is also not an option so the curve would be something of this sort that is a wavy motion and without touching the directing line so what we are going to do here is that in that superior question what we did was radius plus x here what you are going to do is radius minus x would be the radius that we are going to take so let's move uh, the procedure is same as simple and superior the only difference is that uh, the radius uh, sorry the point would be inside the circle instead of being on the circle or on the outside of the circle so again we will uh, we will say ki the point is x mm inside the circle and diameter is d and center is c so first we will construct a circle with diameter d and center c which goes something like this center i have taken a c i'll draw a dry, uh, circle of diameter d then my next step i'll draw a tangential directing line at the base as i did for previously two questions then i'll draw parallel lines that, uh, to the directing lines from center of distance pi d and divide it into eight equal parts as you can see here this is a tangential line this is the directing line this is the central line that is parallel to the directing line and i have divided it into eight equal parts again here as i did for the superior cycloid and i'll mark it as c1 c2 c3 and up till c8 done so let's move on to the next step the next step would be to take it as d minus x again uh, the same mistake is there that it's not d the d depicts the radius so radius minus the distance the point is inside the circle and then we have to draw a circle as you can see then this is the circle which is radius minus the distance the point is inside the circle so the point is here this distance is x so i'll minus it from the radius of my rolling circle to get this circle which on which the point will move and the point on the inside the circle will be moving when my actual rolling circle would be rolling so uh, now what next i'm going to do draw parallel lines from each and every point on the circle as i did so it will be from first i've drawn from 8 1 and 7 it would be a common line 3 and 4 again it would be a common line and 4 it will be a common line and for 2 and 6 the it will be passing through the center so this itself would be the line so I have uh, divided the circle into 8 parts and then drawn parallel lines to the directing line from 